George himself because there's a lot to talk about there. He's agreed to a four-year, $212 million maximum contract with the 76ers. Sources told ESPN early Monday morning, George's deal, which sources said includes a player option in the final season in 2027-28, brings him back to the Eastern Conference to partner with MVP center Joel Embiid and all-star guard Tyrese Maxey, who, according to Woj, just agreed to a five-year, $204 million max extension. Taking a look at recent big three trios this postseason, Giannis, Lillard, and Chris Middleton were undone by injuries en route to a first-round exit in the Eastern Conference. Meanwhile, both the Clippers' big three of Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and James Harden, as well as the Suns, Kevin, Dur Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal were eliminated in the first round out west. So, Shannon, I'll come right back to you. Or actually, Perk, I'll go to you first, Perk. Does Paul George move, does the Paul George move prove that the big three concept still works in the NBA? Absolutely. And look, we have to see it, but they match up. I mean, that that's a match made in heaven when it comes down to big three because of the position that Paul George played. We're talking about the wing position. So he's not taking anything away from Tyrese Maxey. Now you're looking at the Philly big three. They have a big in Joel Embiid. They have a point guard in Tyrese Maxey. And you have a wing guy in Paul George. When you look at the other big threes, you had Kawhi. Paul George and James Harden with the Clippers. And then with the Suns, you had, you know, Bradley Beal, uh, KD, and Devin Booker. All of those guys were trying to figure out who was going to be the ball handler, who was the guy going to be making plays, who was going to run the point, things of that nature. You don't have that problem with this big three right here. They're going to fit in just fine. And under a championship coach in Nick Nurse that gets the attention and speak the language in that locker room. I don't know what's going on because the Milwaukee Bucks, they have the same big three, but because Chris Middleton, he can't stay healthy, right? That derails everything. Giannis obviously wasn't healthy, but yeah, you still could get it, you still could get it done with a big three. And I think they will prove to the world that they that you could get it done with a big three. Wendy, Wendy, go nature, ahead. Nature finds a way. The since the 1980s, guys, the <laughs> NBA owners have been putting you know, parameters in that are various hard hardening of the salary cap. And the superstars have found a way to get to where they want to go. And super teams have been created. Now, this one is a little bit different because the reason this happened was because of Tyrese Maxey. Not just that he became a superstar player as a 21st overall pick, but because his salary was so low they were able to make this room for Paul George with Joel and Beast on the roster. Put in NFL terms, it's kind of like Brock Purdy becoming a star in San Francisco and his salary being so low because of his draft status that the 49ers were able to build up. That's Rowdy. essentially what happened here. Tyrese Maxey's cap hold coming into this free agency was only $13 million. The, the brilliance of the drafting him at the 21st pick and then getting him to hold off on his extension until today after the Paul George commitment is why this happened. I think that's going to be very hard to replicate with future big threes. But I will say to you that in the wake of this collective bargaining agreement, many people would have said the big three era is over. And on the first day where the, all the rules come into place, July 1st, 2024, a new big three is formed. So I think we'll see less of it. I'm not sure that it's, that this one is going to work because it's still predicated on Embiid's health. But nature and big threes and super teams find a way in the NBA. Go ahead, Shannon. Well, if you look at, but if you look at the big three that, that's been assembled, how well can they play without the ball? See, Giannis needs the ball. Dame Lillard needs the ball. It's a lot more difficult for them to play together and Middleton and his help then Paul George, Paul George can play out the ball. We know everything's going to be predicated through Joel Embiid. So now when you d double down on Joel Embiid, he can kick to a PG. He can kick to a Tyrese Maxey. He's not going to – this guy, look, no matter what you think of Paul George, he's he's three times, four times the player that Tobias Harris was. Ty Tobias Harris has never showed up in, the, in big, meaningful moments, and he skated. While we bash Joel Embiid for his health and not showing up in big games, while we bash Ben Simmons for not showing up, Tell me the game in which Tobias Harris. And he's been on a max contract, Perk. He's been skating for years. 
he hey he got he got uh, uh he was a trustee because he got to go free you know trustees in, in prison uh, perk they get busy they get to go to the library they drive the truck off campus and nobody says anything that's what he was he was a trustee in philly because he got to go unscathed nobody said anything about tobias harris while they beating up everybody else so i do believe paul george if you look at golden state the last really big three that did something none of those guys really need the ball Kevin Durant's going to go get you to his 25 to 30 on like 19 shots. Doesn't need the ball. Can play off the ball. Steph Curry can play off the ball. Uh, uh, Clay was catch and shoot. So it can work, but you have to have the pieces to fit. You look at Boston, they got a big two, but they guys really play well off each other, and they were drafted there together. Boston, well, let me go say Boston, this to you. Uh, Boston actually got a big five, and this is what I wanted to ask uh, Wendy when it comes down to the Celtics. They're the only team in basketball that has five all-star caliber players in their starting lineup when Christopher Porzingis is available. And I'm trying to figure out, we keep saying about this first, uh, first apron, second apron, cooking apron, all these different aprons, but some kind of way, Brad Stevens and the Boston Celtics managed to put together a starting five that are all all-star caliber players. Tatum is going to get a $300 million extension. That will hit their books one year from now. They have to deal with Derek White. Derek White is an extremely valuable player. He is coming for an extension that will hit the Celtics' books one year from now. I'm not certain the Celtics will be able to keep this group together in a year. But they'll have them together for this season and have a great chance to repeat. And even if they have to lose one of their key pieces, they still will have great depth. But you, Perk, you have identified the exact reason why the Knicks went for the Mikhail Bridges trade. The Knicks looked at the new rules and said the future is not a big three. The future is building out a roster of seven or eight guys that you can sustain with over the course of time because top-heavy mm -hmm. rosters aren't going to work. And that's the wager that the Knicks made. The Knicks built – the Knicks have gone into the new age with their team. The Sixers have gone maybe into the last generation with their team. We'll see – which one winds up winning? Because there's no doubt that the top-end talent in Philly is better than the top-end talent in New York. But you look at New York, they've got eight guys, eight or nine guys. They just lost Isaiah Hartenstein about an hour ago to the Thunder. they got seven, eight guys who they believe are in their 20s, in their prime, and they can have, under, even under the new rules, for the next three or four years. I don't think the Celtics can say that, and I don't think that the Sixers, even with this top – these top stars will be able to build out a roster that's comparable. So we are in a transition period, and I know the apron stuff is extremely frustrating to fans who just want to focus on players and, and what their team can do, but it's a reality, and we're seeing conflicting philosophies and conflicting moments, and what is happening and the different tracks the teams are taking now will define the future. Well, it's big-time points made by both Big Perk and Big Wendy, and you better have to make those big-time points because y'all both interrupted me. <laughs> y'all both interrupted me. So you violated rules. You violated one of the cardinal rules of the show. But that's okay. But that's okay because you made good points. Here's the bottom line, guys. Wendy, in all seriousness, that last point you made, I'm going to piggyback off of because I think the person for the microscope to be under is, is, is Daryl Morey. The fact of the matter is when you talked about how the Knicks have built out a roster, when you talked about seven to eight players, well, what you got other than the big three in Ubre, so you got a big four as far as I'm concerned, you got to be, you got to make sure that you've got, that you're doing your part if you're Daryl Morey, who's never guided his team to a championship, even though he's been considered to be an exceptional executive. Because we look at Embiid. I watched this brother sit courtside for a couple of games in the Knicks-Philly series. I watched this brother on one leg average 35. On one leg, there is no doubt that a healthy B is going to be a monster. Ain't nobody going to stop him. The moment doesn't shrink him in any way. We saw Tyrese Maxey show up, okay? And so Paul George essentially is your third wheel, capable of being a two or a number one wheel on any given night, although not continuously. So when I look at it from that standpoint, I'm looking at their roster. We know Nick Nurse is a champion as a coach. The one unproven commodity is Daryl Morey as it specifically pertains to championship aspirations. So that's where I'm at with it. Shannon, I'll give you the word on that. What are your thoughts? I agree. Can, now, can he put the pound? You got a big three. 
but now, can, <clears throat> excuse me, can you fill out the roster with auxiliary pieces? That, that's what you're going to need because if you look at the Derek Weiss that came in and made those plays and you look at guys like that, you know what you're going to get from the big two, uh, JT and JB, but it's the auxiliary pieces now four through eight. Can you count on these at a nightly basis? The question I have for you, Stephen A., when is Brunson going to be due for a max contract? Because he's going into that third year to five-year deal. At some point in time, $20 million ain't going to be enough for him. He's going to say, y'all need to see your boy. Well, the second, the second he's el- the second you can give it to him, you got to give it to him because he deserves it. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Yes. You understand? Now, me personally, I would prefer a number one option rather than Brunson. I don't think Brunson uh-huh. should be the number one offensive option, despite how great he was this year. Because I'm thinking about the taller Jalen Browns and obviously Jason Tatum's, and now you got a Paul George and others that you could put on them to cause a little bit of trouble. But that's just me. At the end of the day, the New York Knicks have a deeper roster, but the Philadelphia 76ers appear to have a better roster. That is the last word on this subject. Perk, sit up when you're on this show. <laughs> sit up. You understand? Uh, stay. Uh,